Well, how do there, chums, as I, Captain of the Steers, and today, chums, I got myself a cup of coffee rather than a cup of tea. And um, you can probably tell from what's going on behind me, I'm going to be talking about UFOs and little grey men. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's one there. Look, see him, see him. He's sneaky, he's sneaky. He's hiding behind my chair at the moment. There's another one, he's, he's over there. You see him? Sneaky. Freaking sneaky little guests. Anyway, why am I talking about UFOs today, people? Well, let's, let's just just jump on over to the old um, Tinterwebs, shall we, for a second, people? Let's, let's just uh, remove this background for a moment. Let's bring on up this news article. You know what? Uh, we could probably do with having that in this corner, just just, just there. There we go. Boom. There we are. I don't know whether you can actually read that, actually, people. Um, you know what? Let's let's do this view instead. Pow! There we go. I'm on the old Tinterwebs. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit on, onto this article. There we are. Get rid of all the tombola stuff at the frickin' side. But what this says is exclusive to CSCIA Secret Office has conducted UFO retrieval missions on at least nine crash sites around the world, whistleblowers reveal. Okay, all right. The Office of Global Access, the OGA, a wing of the CIA, has played a central role in collecting alien spacecraft since 2003, sources tell Daily Mail. Uh, I don't really trust Daily Mail all too much, people. I often hear it called the Daily Fail. Yes, fake news and all that sort of shenanigans. At least nine non-human craft have been recovered by the US government, some ragged from crash and two completely intact. But I do believe in aliens. You know, with the vastness of the universe and the galaxies and how many planets that are out there, I can only but hope that there is intelligent life in crazy enough to come here. I've got other theories on where aliens come from. I've done a whole video on alien origins because I think they might reside inside of our own planet and are just very evolved humans and we could be kind of some kind of experiment of theirs. Anyway, I've put a video up there about my thoughts and theories on aliens and are they already here and been here for some freaking time, mate. So go and hit that up because that's pretty interesting. Now, the rest of the article just goes into it in a little more detail. They've given you the short version up here. They give you all the long sort of beefy stuff stuff down here if you want to read into it and see all the sorts of evidence and things that they've cited, blah de blah de blah I think you get the idea. However, what I want to talk to you about really, people, is not so much that, but what's going on, you know, with that technologies. Because the, the, o, the OAG go out, send their military contractors to go and pick up these crafts. Great. Then what do they do with the crafts after they pick them up? They give them to military contractors, the likes of Lockheed and, you know, Boeing, and, or not Boeing, but you know, all the sorts of military contractors that could reverse engineer this technologies to give ourselves flying airborne alien craft. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, what about what good old Prince Charles had to say? And what about all these drums people are banging right now about what's good for the environment and what's not good for the environment, people inside of the view of us? It, it, it rather perplexes me in what they're doing with this alien craft. I mean, take a listen to what Prince Charles had to say about the immediate threat that faces the world right now, people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the midst of a crisis that is now, I hope, well understood. Global warming, climate change, and the devastating loss of biodiversity are the greatest threats humanity has ever faced. Ever faced! And one largely of our own creation. Yeah! Now, I have dedicated uh, much of my life to the restoration of harmony between humanity, nature, and the environment, and to the encouragement of corporate, social, and environmental responsibility. Quite frankly, it has been a bit of an uphill struggle. But now it is time to take it to the next level. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model. Well, hold on one minute. We've got alien craft coming from God knows where, traveling billions of light years, perhaps unless they come from inside our planet. 
that is using some sort of propulsion device, which I'm not seeing any sort of carbon emissions coming out of the dang thing. It's flying under sort of its own duress. In all different directions, willy-nilly. I'm fairly sure that the technology, rather than reverse engineer it for military complexy reasons to just blow ourselves to kingdom come, perhaps maybe, just maybe, we could look at maybe, I don't know, getting that technology to make new power plants or something, people inside of the view of Earth, you know? Because these things, they're like, they're, they use some sort of grav drive or magnetic propulsion drive. I don't know what sort of propulsion these sort of crafts are using, but if you're going to reverse engineer it, share the knowledge, share that research to better humanity. Surely we could come up with some sort of new energy source. Obviously these aren't propelled by freaking coal or fossil fuels, are they? You know? I don't know. It just seems weird to me, people. We're being told that there is a massive crisis that's facing this planet since the dawn of time. Whereas I kind of think that the main risks to this planet is somebody pressing a red button that launches nuclear freaking missiles, you know? And what's that? Oh, that's weapons of mass destruction. Oh, so we're getting this alien craft and who are we giving it to? The people that could engineer weapons of mass destruction. We're just getting closer to our freaking doom. We're creating another existential crisis from extraterrestrial technology. What the actual flying fudge, people? It makes no sense at all. Okay, fine. If you really need to make or reverse engineer craft, so, you know, if we are faced with a threat from uh, extraterrestrials, then at least we can meet them on their own playing field. We can level it a bit. Or we understand their technology that we can bring it down. But who's to say we haven't already done that? I mean, if they've already recovered nine crashed vehicles, so you're telling me that these aliens that are highly intelligent, that have got these crafts, fly all the way here, thousands and thousands of light years, get here and crash. Bollocks. They're being shot down or something. There's something already going on there to, for us to retrieve so many of these crafts. There's got to be more to it than that. I honestly don't believe that, people. You know, they can't be that freaking clumsy. You know? So anyways, that's my little mini rant. I just don't understand why we've got the means right now, probably sitting in some sort of aircraft hangar to make ourselves a whole new energy source, to shift up the paradigm, to solve our problems when it comes to energy, perhaps, with these alien craft. And if we don't use the alien craft, we've already invested shed loads of money in CERN, the Hadron Collider, that collides particles and stuff. Why can't we use the same sort of resources and the same sort of funding that that thing freaking had to make nuclear fusion? Rather than nuclear reaction that's got all this sort of output and waste and loss of energy, nuclear fusion is like creating a mini frickin' sun. And from what I understand, CERN's Hadron Collider isn't too far off of that. So why can't we get all the same sort of funding from the same sources and make frickin' nuclear fusion happen? People, I honestly think if they wanted to throw a bit of cash at the problem, it would be solved within the space of like, what, five to ten years. And they could have done it five to ten years ago. We could already be there, but the reason that we aren't is because all the oil moguls, the shells, the BPs, all of the oil moguls would lose out on cash. And we can't have that because that's Billy No Mates, that's mates with frickin' Prince Charles and the WEF, that are all saying, we need to do this, we need to act. They've got the power to frickin' act. They're the government. They're the people in control. They're the people pulling all the puppety strings. We're the people that just have to sit here and watch the show. We've elected them to do what's good by us, but ah, they know. They're lining their pockets. They're lining their mates' pockets. Enough is enough. They're holding back patents for all of this free energy technologies. I saw a TED's talk. There was a guy that's actually invented these sheets of like see-through sort of polymer fibers that you put on your windows and it turns every window in your house into a solar panel. Where's that technology? That TED show was like 10 years ago, mate. I've seen a video from Top Gear where they show like drive-by wire where they've got a car that runs on freaking salt water, people. The only thing that comes out of the, the exhaust is water vapour. And we're saying that the sea levels are rising. Well, there's the solution to that problem. Put it in freaking cars, mate. And they say that this energy, that this engine in this car can power a whole freaking street. It's a, 
It's a hydrogen fuel reactor. It's got it one built into its own. Yes, it costs a million quid, but what's more important, a million quid or the planet? Start putting these things into freaking operation. Start collaborating, bring down the cost from a million quid to half a million quid, and then maybe in 10 years down to 100,000 quid. And then hopefully within like 20 years, it will be affordable for the mass public. Start doing it. You've got the means, you've got the ability, you've got the technology. Stop putting it all onto the general taxpayer and saying, no, you've got to pay more taxes. No, we're going to put in ULS zones. No, we're going to restrict your travel. You're going to be locked down. You're going to freaking like it. No, mate. Freaking invest in the technologies and get it freaking fixed. That's, that's pretty much what we want from our governments is fix these issues. Don't just freaking fly around on your private jets preaching at us to do it it's not what we're paying you to do anyway god um i didn't expect this to turn into a rant video but i kind of enjoyed it i'm enjoying my coffee people inside the viewers but yeah i suppose is that what you've tuned into today did you expect to see that happen i don't know but um it's been an interesting one hasn't it people but there we go that, that's my take on that honestly think that us as humans we've got the ability whether that's through reverse engineering or otherwise to solve this energy crisis that they keep saying is hitting us people and um i hope that they pull their finger out and do it rather promptly to be fair okay anyway um that's all i've got to say on that yeah and if you are watching any of you little alien critters like that little sneaky chap over there hello and uh, welcome to earth um yeah you're um your, your mode of transport though we're, we're taking that apart and we're making our own ha! Uh, that, that, that's not going to incite war with these little chappies is it holy fudge anyway goodbye people and take care